What's up gamers, Lecture here with a brand new Lethal Flash Carino build for Torchlight Infinite. I just recently returned to Torchlight Infinite for the new season called Twin Nightmare, and the updated content has been a blast so far. Some of you may remember my original Ring of Blade snapshot build for Lethal Flash Carino, which I'll update after I'm done testing some changes, but for now I'm playing with a newly added Warwind Blade skill. The Warwind Blade's Lethal Flash Carino playstyle is more involved than most builds. Positioning is key, as the returning blades can be dragged through enemies. Increase movement speed enough and you can keep dragging the returning blades through an entire map. Skill radius is also an important stat to make sure you hit all the enemies along the way. The Warwind Blade build already has a ridiculous amount of damage due to the desperate measure of snapshot and 7 or more spinning blades stacked on top of each other. So movement speed and skill radius can be prioritized to make mapping feel smooth as butter. Similar to Ring of Blades, Warwind Blades is a persistent area skill that can utilize snapshotting of desperate measures for a massive damage multiplier. This level 80 hero talent consumes all of your ammo to provide 35% additional damage for each ammo consumed. I made sure to test desperate measures again, and it's still providing a separate damage multiplier that multiplies against its own stacks. This means desperate measures is given a 6 times multiplier when used with 6 ammo. Increasing the maximum ammo capacity by another 6 ammo with 3 Eve of the King Slain memories results in an insane 36 times multiplier. With King Slayers only costing around 3 FE apiece, Desperate Measure Snapshotting can be used on a cheap budget as soon as you reach level 80. My starter Warwind Blades build can already deal 600 million DPS at level 95 after only spending around 50 FE. While huge separate damage multipliers like Desperate Measures are essential to scaling damage output, you also need a high amount of base damage for multipliers to… multiply. In order to increase our base damage, we need to gain static damage, also known as flat damage. In the past I used intelligence and mana stacking for spellcasters to gain flat damage, like with Autobomb or Gemma. My old Ring of Blades Lethal Flash Karina build utilized Wilt, with weapon affixes to increase that base Wilt damage but Wilt just isn't as strong anymore. Now Mind Blade has just been buffed by 50%, so I decided this would be worth trying out. I also wanted to utilize centralized loading as it can easily double, maybe even triple damage output. Making use of Mind Blade and centralized loading means we need to prioritize a ranged weapon with the highest flat damage possible, like the slow and heavy hitting two-handed cannons. By doing some rough estimates, 900 top end damage should be possible on a cannon with 2 tier 1 physical damage affixes and a tier 1 cold damage affix. Multiply 900 by 1.5 from the newly buffed Mind Blade and you get a whopping 1350 added flat damage to the top of the range. Hopefully the theorycraft ends up working in the final version of the build, but first let's get into the starter build details for Whirlwind Blade Lethal Flash Carino. Desperate Measures is the core hero trait for this snapshot build. The other hero traits selected are Dart Shot for mobility skill cooldown and Lethal Interval to increase subsequent projectile damage when shotgunning. More shotgun damage can be obtained in the Hero Relic. I've been hearing mention of this subsequent projectile damage actually being additive with the original shotgun damage, which would mean it would be insane for scaling, making it deal more damage than even the first projectile when shotgunning. I'll try to test it out later and report back in the advanced video. Let's cover the starting budget items for the build. I purchased 3 Eve of the King Slaying Memories for a total 8 FE, which I quickly realized wasn't even necessary as the build had plenty of damage to quickly push up Time Mark 7 without any problems. For fast speed mapping, I instead used 3 cheap magic memories to gain 60% move speed. You can also pick up a free slot relic with the subsequent projectile damage for shotgunning as the most important affix, followed by projectile quantity. 
A 1FE Frozen River was my first weapon used for the build at level 80, but I found an amazing 1FE DR on a crafted cannon with plus 4 active skill levels and a high amount of gear physical damage that gave me way more damage through Mind Blade. Just make sure you pick up a Goddess of Knowledge Divinity Slate with 50% physical to cold damage conversion if you aren't using the Frozen River. For belts, there are two options depending on your preference. Light Hunter Belt provides a high amount of energy shield for a defensive option, while Pale Miss Embrace provides skill radius and area damage for an offensive option. Sky Devourer Insight Armor is a super cheap legendary that provides a decent amount of energy shield, along with skill radius that is useful for the build. The final budget legendary is Misfortune Watch, but this amulet might not be a DPS increase until you start stacking a decent amount of critical strike rating. If you still have some leftover FE to spend, buy a cheap soul candle with some skill radius and movement speed. The rest of the starter gear can be self-crafted or bought for cheap. Focus on getting energy shield gear with useful affixes such as energy shield, critical strike rating, and critical strike damage. Don't forget to also cap resistances and get move speed on your boots. For the skill setup, Woven Blade is the main skill, supported by multiple projectiles, freeze chance, slow projectile, and both physical and cold added damage. Freeze Chance provides the full 35% additional damage since this build converts 100% of physical damage to cold. The last two supports provide a big DPS increase when first starting Woven Blade's Lethal Flash Carino, but their flat damage values will become diminished in the final version of the build and will need to be replaced eventually. Biting Cold is our curse skill that is turned into an aura that debuffs enemies with Terrain of Malice, also supported by Abyssal Hatred and Extended Duration. Blurry Steps is used for the increased movement speed, linked to Overclock, Mania, and Cooldown Reduction. Centralized Loading received a huge buff to provide a separate damage multiplier and projectile quantity, which is the main reason I decided to use a ranged weapon instead of my previous Sacrificial Blade setup for Spellcasters. Centralized Loading is supported by Quick Mobility, Cooldown Reduction, and Magic Dash. Burst of Anger is used for 10% additional skill area and 20% move speed, linked to Mania, Extended Duration, and Well Fought Battle. The first starting passive skills to use to increase damage are Frigid Domain and Precise Projectiles. There are two passive skill options to link to seal conversion in order to reserve life. Either use Energy Fortress for more survivability, or Ice Imbune to explode enemies for more area clearing. The final passive skill is Swiftness for increased movement speed. Keep this at level 15 as the mana cost drastically increases at level 16. Let's go over the talent tree setup. Starting with the Goddess of Knowledge tree, Chili provides 20% additional damage and Insight provides another 30%. Skill Radius is one of our most important stats. 50% of physical damage is converted to cold damage in this tree, while the other 50% is converted through a Goddess of Knowledge Divinity Slate. And finally, plus one spell skill level is gained at the end. The critical strike rating and damage nodes can be returned to after all the other major talents are gained. Magister is the second skill tree in the setup. Shell provides 30% additional max energy shield at the cost of setting max life to 100, but the penalty doesn't matter as life is sealed with percentage based passive skills. And Mind Blade, of course, is the core damage scaler in the Whirlwind Blades build. Max energy shield is picked over the spell damage, as this damage increase is edited with other bonuses and becomes severely diminished. Skill Radius, Critical Strike Rating, Critical Strike Damage, Defense, and Skill Duration are useful nodes picked up throughout the skill trees. The 375 flat max energy shield is most beneficial for starting characters that don't have expensive gear yet. The third and final tree is Warlord. Warlord is actually a strength and fire based tree, but there are many beneficial area bonuses to benefit from. Sweep provides 22% chance to deal double damage and up to 100% skill radius. Focus Strike provides up to 40% additional damage to enemies at the center, which is perfect for Warwind Blades when it stops right on top of elites and bosses. Once again, Energy Shield is preferred over additive damage increases, while more skill radius and critical strike bonuses are picked up along the way. The Energy Shield regain greatly helps with survivability in this high Energy Shield build, and then the weakened talent is easy to apply to reduce damage dealt by enemies by 
Finally, there's one last cluster of skill radius. The 100% skill radius at the end should always be active, as Warring Blades doesn't need to be cast very often. This Warlord skill tree alone boosts skill radius by a massive 317%. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the proof of concept for my Warren Blade Lethal Flash Carino build, the training dummy test. My character is currently level 95, still rocking the budget starter gear. For the first test, I'll remove the memories I use for speed mapping to gain 60% move speed, as they have some critical strike rating and I want to get a baseline test before Kingslayers are added. Remember, 6 ammo consumed by desperate measures results in a 6x multiplier. This build is already doing 104 million DPS without any Eve of the Kingslaying relics. For the second test, let's equip all three Kingslayers to increase maximum ammo capacity by 6. This means the DPS should be multiplied by a factor of 6, and we should see around 624 million DPS. There you have it, the math is pretty spot on. That's all I have for this video, thanks for watching. You can find a planner link for this starter build in the description. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for my future Torchlight Infinite content, including the advanced guide to follow up for this build. Join the game discussion on our Discord channel, and stop by the live stream if you want to see my progress. Until next time, peace out and happy slaying.